Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue looking at the luminous flux method, or sometimes it's called the lumen method, of calculating light levels within a given space. In the previous video in this series we looked at the formula and what each of the individual parts of it meant, so if you haven't already watched that video please go back and view it because it's going to help you to understand this video. In this video we're going to do some calculations, we're going to put some numbers into our formula and see what happens when we vary those figures and explain what the output means. So let's get to that calculation now. So let's say we've got something like uh, a classroom uh, where the surface needs to be illuminated to a level of 300 lux, which is a good value for classrooms that are not being used for uh, uh, night classes. So 300 lux. So we would say that we put in 300 there. So let's actually put this into the calculation. We'd say that is equal to uh, 300 and then we multiply that by the area of the room. So we've got, uh, let's say the area of the room is something like five meters by six meters. So we're gonna say that that is 30. So we've got an area of 30 meters squared. We then divide that by this value of U times M. Now, let's say that we had an absolutely perfect room. Let's say that every surface bounced back, every single bit of light that hit it onto the surface that we're interested in. Let's say that uh, the room was spotlessly clean and was cleaned every day. The light fittings were cleaned every day, so there's no uh, buildup of dust and dirt on the fittings and the fittings are perfect, the light level doesn't drop off or anything like that. We could say that both of these values would be one. One times one would give us one, and if we take a number and divide it by one, it remains the same, so this number won't change. However, in reality, that's not going to be the case. The room is going to be dirty. Some of the light is going to be lost. It's going to be absorbed by the surfaces instead of being bounced back out again. So that means that our values here are going to be less than one. So obviously, let's say we've got here 0.9 for that one and 0.9 for that one, just random numbers that I'm making up. What you're going to end up on here is a number that is less than one. You're actually going to end up with 0.81 in this case. So if we put a value in there of 0.81, so let's see how we got that. Let's say we've got 0.9 times by 0.9. Again, these are values that I've not figured out. I'm just kind of using these as example figures. If we multiply those together, we end up with 300 times 30 is going to give us 9,000. And then we're going to divide that by 0.9 times 0.9, which gives us 0.81. Now, if you take a number and you divide it by a number that is smaller than 1, so between 0 and 1, what happens to this number? Remember, what you're doing is you're saying, how many of these will fit into here? Well, actually, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a number that is bigger than the number that you started with. So 9,000 divided by 0.81. Let's see exactly what that value is. So 9,000 divided by 0.81 is going to give us a value of, uh, <laughs> nice and conveniently, that's going to give us 11,111.1 uh, recurring. So we'll just leave that at 11,111 for the purposes of this. And that, bear in mind, is our value for F, which remember is luminous flux, or lumens, and is measured in lumens. So there we've got 11,111 lumens. So that is the amount of light that we need our fittings in that space to give off in order to illuminate the surface to the right value of 300 lux in this case. Now what starts to happen if you start to juggle with these numbers a little bit? So let's kind of mix it up a little bit. Let's say that we want to make the surfaces brighter. So let's say that the classroom is actually going to be used for night classes, so we need to increase uh, the illuminance on those surfaces. So that's now going to be 500 lux, which is a typical value for that kind of application. So if we make this number bigger, what's going to happen to this number? If we make E bigger, what happens here? Well, because this is on the top of the calculation, on top of the division, if we make this number bigger, this number gets bigger which makes sense, doesn't it? If we want the surface to be more brightly lit, then we need to increase the amount of light output that the, uh, the light sources have. Again, if we make this number bigger, if we make the room area bigger, then we're going to increase this number here, aren't we? Which means that, again, increasing the area means that we need more lumens. We need our light sources to give off more light. In reality, what you'd probably end up doing is installing more light fittings to achieve this, but more on that a little later. But then again, let's think about this. Now, if let's say we're going from a nice kind of clean room where it's clean quite regularly, 
uh, and everything's all good in there and the light fittings don't uh, drop off over a long time, we could use this value of 0 0.9 as an example. However, let's say it's in a really dirty room. What might start to happen then is that this number will actually get smaller. So the further away you get from one, kind of the less clean and well-maintained the environment is over a period of time. So this number would get smaller. Now, if you think about that, this number here, if we make the number that we're dividing by, in this case, get even further away from one, again, this number is going to get bigger. Again, let's illustrate that. So let's say uh, we'll take the calculation from here now, change to a different pen color just to keep it fresh and exciting. Uh, so let's say we're keeping the room the same, 300 looks required, times that by 30 square meters, divide that by 0.9 for the utilization. But let's reduce this number now. Let's turn that into something like uh, 0.7 or something like that. What are we gonna end up with then? Well, again, we've got the same number on the top, 9,000. That calculation hasn't changed. And then we've got 0 0.9 times by 0 0.7, which is going to give us 0 0.63. Now notice we've made this number smaller than this number. So what's gonna to happen to our final calculation? What's gonna to happen to the amount of lumens required? Well, of course, it's going to get a little bit bigger, isn't it? 9,000 divided by 0 0.63. Uh, unfortunately, I must admit, I can't do that in my head, so we'll just do that on the calculator real quick. Gives us 14,280, it's 5.7, so we'll go to no decimal places, and there is our value for the luminous flux required now. So can you see that as the kind of maintenance and care of the room gets smaller as the dust and dirt gets bigger in there if it's a dirtier environment what happens is that the amount of lumens that we need gets even bigger still so we either need to install light fittings that give off more light or we probably need to install more light fittings now what we're going to do in a future video is we're going to have a look at how we then use this number to figure out the amount of lights that we need for a space and how we can answer that all important exam question. So this is a typical question that we might get inside uh, an exam for our City and Guilds or EAL qualification. And ultimately we're trying to figure out the amount of luminous flux required. And then the next step, which we'll cover in a future video, is figuring out just how many lights are required. And from that, we can also calculate other useful things like the amount of power that the circuit's gonna be using and things like that. So there we go, that's an introduction to the luminous flux method. Super helpful calculation for us, especially when it comes to passing those all important exams, but also gives us a good idea of what this calculation is used for in the real world. In reality, nowadays, most lighting calculations are done on computer using software like Dialux, which is my favorite, or Relux, uh, which is also really good. Um, but this kind of gives us a really good idea of the concept of luminous flux now when you see the amount of lumens printed on the light fitting on the data sheet or the packaging of it, hopefully you'll know what that means. And that gives us uh, this answer here that gets us on the right path towards calculating how many light fittings we need in a room. But as we say, we'll cover that in a future video. So there we go. That's our introduction to the luminous flux method. Hope this video has been helpful to you. And all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.